Well, hidey ho there. This is your favorite instructor again, Mr. Brian Bush, and today we're going to be talking about circular interpolation. Interpolation means moving, basically, and you're already familiar with the G2 and G3 commands, and there's not a whole lot different here. You've got the radius command, and you've got incremental arc center command. So, the big difference here being that <clears throat> since we're working diametrically, the difference between our X start and X end will be double. If you look at the example here, we're starting at an X or a diameter of one inch and a Z of negative one inch. We have a half inch radius and we're ending at a Z of negative 1.5, which makes sense because linear it's moving just a half inch then if it's 90 degrees however our diameter doubles because going back here sorry about that go back here you can see then so the difference here there was our start and our X right here and there's the end and our X and the difference between them is one inch which is double the radius being swung. Now, you can also do this then incrementally, which is fine, except then the difference incrementally is still going to be the radius. So you're only moving then from if this is u, because x is u and Z, W is Z, so then this would be replaced with U.5 and W negative 0.5, R.5. So let's take a look then at, let's open up uh, NC plot. And just play around a little bit here. Start our first new program. So, if we are going to uh, start a new program, we need what? We need a percent sign. Then we need an O number. O, one, two, three, four, five. Difference here, SL20 being the newer machine, is going to be five digit number. HL machine, which is the older machine, is going to be a four digit number. So this is going to be for the SL machine, we'll say. We need to then, when we load it, make sure that we save these in a folder that has a three digit number 001, 002. You get the idea. And it can only be saved as this file name. Now, in here, I can make a remark which will show up on the control. I'm just going to call it Remark. Expand this out a little ways here. So we can see what's going on. Now, I want to make sure that I'm starting. So in other words, this is my safety line. I know I'm going to be making arcs in the XZ plane. So we're going to be G18. I'm going to be programming in feed per rev mode, which I believe is G99. But let's just see, let's just go back here. Open up the programming, click on G codes quick. So we got here nothing. Okay. Come to our Haas Productivity Lathe book. I'll just type in find G ninety-nine feed per revolution. Sure enough, that's what I wanted. I'm gonna go back to page. 30 again. Let 
and open up and see plot. So now I'm in feed per rev mode, G18. I am programming in inch mode, G20. And that will be our safety line. Again. Scroll back over. You can already see ahead of time that I'm set up in my lathe configuration. If you're not, come up here, go to lathe diameter. Here you go, lathe diameter custom can cycles. I believe this will carry some of our can cycles. We'll find out later. So ahead of time we want to make sure that the machine is in a safe position to do any kind of tool changing or anything like that because again Lathes will change tools wherever you tell them to change tools at. So two ways of doing this here. We can tell it to move it rapid. G0. G28. U0. Point. W0. Point. In other words, move it rapid to home, but move nothing incrementally first. That one's confusing to me. I choose to do this. G0, G53, X0, move machine coordinates, X0. Again, it's modal, so we need to put it on the other line. We'll move X first. G53, G53, Z0 point. Move home. Now we can change tools. Well, we'll just pick up tool number one. So if we go tool, one offset one that's all we have to do offsets are now instated so long as our setup is correct we will not smash a tool now let's for now just example this part to be this one I'm gonna move to a safe position first outside of the part so I'm going to move at rapid G54, so long as my setup is correct, we'll be okay. I'm going to go to an X of 4.6 and a Z of 0.1, which means I'm approaching the part out here. I'll call this the approach. So I'm outside of the part here. Now I'm going to move. I'm going to feed in to this point right here. But at the same time, I can turn on tool nose radius compensation. That's going to be a tip three because I'm turning OD and it's going to be G42 because I am on the outside of the part. So I'm going to go G1, G42. Well, no, let's back up here. What haven't we done? Well, we haven't turned the spindle on. Nothing's actually turning, so therefore in feed per minute mode, I would not have moved if with a G1. So after the tool has changed, let's go with a... First thing I'm going to do is set my max RPM. So G50 S 1200. And then I will turn the spindle on M3 S 700 G97. Then I'm going to set it to surface speed mode G96 S. Let's say this is steel with carbide, so I'm going to run this about 350. Now, I wrap it to my part on the approach. I'm going to feed into my part and turn on TNR. I could come down here first and then over. So let's make a rapid move in the X first. 
So G0, X. See, we're only compensated. Well, I'll go to G0, X, 1.6. I'll make it a little bigger. 1.9. Z point one. Now I'm going to turn on two nose compensation. So G1, G42 as I approach the part here. X 1.5 Z 0. Should be, able, should be able to plot this here. Refresh my plot and I can see what's happening so right there turned on my tool nose compensation now I can go about moving to this point right here so the start of this arc is Z negative 2 inches X 1.5 so I'm still in G1 we never gave it a feed right here though so how fast would it need to know how to go well for that one Let's go with ten thousandths per rev. So in this one, I'm actually now cutting, so I'm going to slow my feed rate down. Remember, we're in per rev. I'm going to go to an x of 1.5, which we're already there, z of negative 2 inches. So this is my starting point of my arc. My end point is right here. So it's a one inch radius. It is going to be a clockwise arc, a G2. So first thing I'll do, G2, where is my X end point? My X end point is two inches greater than 1.5. So 1.5 plus two, X is going to be 3.5. 5 and my z is going to be negative 3. 2 plus 1, that's negative 3 inches with a connecting radius of 1 inch. So again, the R command still holds true on the lathe as well. It will do the best job it can of making a radius that connects those two points. It may not be the most accurate method of doing the arc, but it will make an arc. So if I wanted to do this incrementally then, let's just change this arc here to be an incremental arc. So I want to make a U move of one inch and a Z move which would be W of negative one inch with the connecting radius of one inch. You can see here something is not quite right. We went from So one inch. What would happen if we were to change that? Two inches. Okay, so we're still incrementally moving two inches diametrically to make that arc but only moving one inch in the Z back. So there's also the IJK method, which tool would be positioned here. So then this would be, this could potentially get confusing. So maybe I'll wait to a, uh, a later point. But this would be an X so we're at current tool position and X is I 
So current tool position to the center of the arc would be I one inch. So if I put I here, let's see how that works out. So it still still works out okay. And we should get a more true radius based on arc center. So that's basically how to swing an arc in a nutshell and how to start the program. Granted I only did one arc for you but I did three types of that same arc so you should be able to go through then and make your first program. I'm going to uh, put a project in eCompanion circular interpolation unit and you will complete that. Thank you for watching.